thank you for the talk. Uh, I was just wondering, most of the illustrations that you brought today um, seem to say that, see, this is what you have already found out with the Western concepts, but all this is already there in you know some of the things that we have, uh, which is almost like uh, you know what you already found is what we what we already have kind of a thing, isn't it? Uh, it, how helpful is that going forward? Uh, why don't we look at what we have and come up with something that does not exist today in, in terms of a theory? Now that we know that we have a wealth and treasure, why don't we come up with something that does not exist, that hasn't been found out, hasn't been studied, hasn't been theorized? Uh, that would be helpful, is what I thought. What is your comment? This is exactly the fallacy I wanted to avoid. So I said very specifically, our ancestors did not know quantum mechanics. Our ancestors did not know evolution. That this is the natural selection through which this particular thing happens. If you look at the, whether the, for example, the birds came from dinosaurs, did uh, Vyasa know about it? No. Okay. And uh, Tulha Pierre, definitely he did not know about plant cognition as such as we understand it today. But the point I want to stress is, they have given us a framework which is even today relevant. And if we use that framework, we will be able to do better science. I will give you two examples, when one I have already given, that of Jagadish Chandra Bose. Okay? The Western botanists were not able to understand what Darwin said, what Darwin hinted at. But Jagadish Chandra Bose was able to demonstrate and again, when Jagadish Chandra Bose demonstrated it, he, it was rejected. And it had to wait for more than 20 to 30 years for the science to rediscover what Jagadish Chandra Bose has done and say that, no, it was not vitalism. Remember this, they saw what Jagadish Chandra Bose did through the framework of the binary of vitalism versus materialism. They were not able to see it as a kind of a process psychology process philosophy. When it became prominent, they were able to understand it. That is one example. Another example I will give you is the way Jha Sudarshan has been, who, had, who died recently, he had been able to do science. So he again had a Vedantic framework, with the help of which he discovered, I mean not I would say with the help of which, inspired by Vedanta, he enters into physics. He sees the entire physics as a pursuit to understand the divine. Okay, and uh, this is a very interesting, very important thing. To he, in fact, when when he was discussing about this, he introduces a very important term that is that we should introduce in our um, education curriculum. We have been given the term scientific temper, which was actually used by Bertrand Russell, coined by Bertrand Russell, but now it has been attributed by the dynastic cultists to Jawaharlal Nehru. That is a different thing, but. The scientific temper is the term that we have, but Yash Sudarshan uses a very interesting term called the psychology of scientific discovery. So this psychology of scientific discovery, the moment in which you discover anything, you feel something that unites you with the entire cosmos. If you just, if you are able to give the children that spark through your curriculum, that will work wonders. That is what Jasu Russian does. And he himself was a living example for that. Okay. So I will, these two examples would suffice, I think, to demonstrate that we are not talking about everything we are already there in our books. We are not saying that. Not, a, not in a single place I have said that. It is not there in our books. That is what I specifically said. Our ancestors did not know all these things. But they have given us profound frameworks and they have given us multiple windows to look at reality and these windows we have to use that is what i said i hope it answers your question uh, namaste sir here here yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, when you sorry sorry uh, what you're saying is right i'm sorry um, but the point i was trying to make is can we with, uh, because nobody in the world is going to do Indic studies or in, in, uh, the way we want it to happen. So my point is going forward, can we take some of the problems that are there today, for instance, 
let's say marrying uh, gravity and uh, uh, you know the, 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 some of the problems that you have in quantum physics, for instance. Can we focus our index studies to go into what we have to find out if answers to some of those problems may be there in, 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 in what we have already? That would be for the specialists to do. Okay, okay. Right. At the same time, what we can do and what we must do is that create a curriculum in which the children are taught that there are different windows through which you can look at reality. That is something that we have to do. For example, right now, as a child I remember learning, God created the whole thing. Then at one particular point of time, I know that God didn't create all these things. And then what? There is a void. I don't know how to look at the universe properly. And for that, I have to again go through books and books and books. I have to read, 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 and then I have to end up in some place. Instead, give us the frameworks. Don't give us the answers. Give us the frameworks through which we can frame the questions. That is all I am asking. 